have you already heard about cloning extinct species? For some, these scenarios are nothing more than dystopian nightmares. To others, they are exciting possibilities. And as science advances, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Some researchers are even exploring how animal cloning could transform the tourism industry in 2070. But what do we really know about cloning extinct species? Is it really possible? And if so, when and what would be the impact? With all movies that were done over the last decades about clones, I'm sure you get a good idea of what it is. But to be sure, we are all online, let us detail quickly what it is. The term cloning describes a variety of processes that can be used to produce genetically identical copies of a biological entity. The copy material, which has the same genetic makeup as the original, is called a clone. Researchers have cloned a wide variety of biological materials, including genes, cells, tissues and even entire organisms, such as a chip. There are three types of artificial cloning, gene cloning, reproductive cloning and therapeutic cloning. Gene cloning creates copies of genes or DNA segments. Reproductive cloning creates copies of whole animals. Therapeutic cloning produces embryotic stem cells for experiments aimed at creating tissues to replace injured or diseased tissues. You know, it's a bit like the movie The Island from 2005 with Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johnson. This was the same concept, creating exact same replica of famous people. And when one of them was seriously ill or needed a compatible donor urgently, they could use their clones. If you haven't seen this film, I highly recommend it. Gene cloning, also known as DNA cloning, is a very different process from reproductive and therapeutic cloning. Reproductive and therapeutic cloning use many of the same techniques, but are performed for different purposes. Researchers routinely use cloning techniques to make copies of genes they want to study. The process involves inserting a gene from an organism, often called exogenous DNA, into the genetic material of a carrier called a vector. Examples of vectors include bacteria, yeast, cells, viruses or plasmids which are small circles of DNA carried by bacteria. Once the gene is inserted, the vector is placed in laboratory conditions that promote its replication, which causes the gene to be copied many times. It is a bit like having an insemination to have a child, but in this case, you want a family or small bacteria, which is more or less the same thing, but a bit cheaper to maintain. In reproductive cloning, researchers remove a mature somatic cell, such as a skin cell, from an animal to be copied. Then, they transfer the DNA from the donor's animal somatic cell into an egg, or oocyte, that has had its own DNA containing nucleus removed. Researchers can incorporate the somatic cell DNA into the empty egg in two days. In the first method, they use a needle to extract the DNA containing nucleus from the somatic cell and inject it into an empty egg. In the second method, they use an electric current to attach the entire somatic cell to the empty egg. In both processes, the egg is allowed to develop into an early stage embryo in the test tube and is then implanted into the uterus of an adult female. Eventually, the adult female gives birth to an animal that has the same genetic makeup as the animal that provided the somatic cell. This offspring is called a clone. Reproductive cloning may require the use of a surrogate mother to allow the clone embryo to develop, as was the case with the most famous clone organism, Dolly the sheep. Fun fact, Dolly, 5 July 1996 to 14 February 2003, was a female fin dorset sheep and the first mammal that was cloned from an adult somatic cell. Over the past 50 years, scientists have used a variety of techniques to clone a wide range of animals. In 1979, researchers created the first genetically identical mice by dividing mouse embryos in a test tube and then imprinting the resulting embryos into the uterus of adult female mice. Shortly thereafter, researchers produced the first genetically identical cows, sheep, 
and chickens by transferring the nucleus of a cell taken from an early stage embryo into an egg that had been stripped of its nucleus. It was not until 1996, however, that researchers succeeded in cloning the first mammal from a mature somatic cell taken from an adult animal. After 276 attempts, Scottish researchers finally produced Dolly the lamb from a cell taken from the odor of a 6 years old ewe. Two years later, researchers in Japan cloned 8 cows from a single cow, but only 4 survived. In addition to cattle and sheep, other mammals that have been cloned from somatic cells include cat, deer, dog, horse, mule, ox, rabbit, and rat. In addition, an Indian macaque was cloned by splitting an embryo. In addition, there have been cases where zoos wanted to show cloned species to the public. As in 2000, the San Diego Zoo planned to exhibit Noah, a cloned gore Indian bison, but he died of an affection two days later. Visibly, they forgot to clone its immune defense. For the next seven years, the zoo was home to Java, a Banteng, a wild bovine species native to the Southeast Asia. Unfortunately, Java had to be euthanized after breaking his legs, so this time they just forgot to insert calcium. Both Noah and Java were cloned using cells from the frozen San Diego Zoo, a collection of skin samples from endangered animals. If we think about it, a scenario like the one in Jurassic Park, where there is a place on Earth where dinosaurs live, is still a fantasy. Because extinction is an incredible challenge, and it is unclear whether dinosaur DNA can ever be recovered. In fact, with current technology, DNA samples only last about a million years. This means that we could theoretically clone a Neanderthal, but not a Triceratops, the dinosaur that disappeared about 65 million years ago. And clone a dinosaur is cool, but if you want to talk to primitive people, just turn the bars on at closing time. It works just as well. Knowing this, the DNA of a woolly mammoth or tundra mammoth is more accessible for use in cloning. Scientists now have frozen mammoth samples and can implant this genetic material into elephants, which are genetically similar. However, it is impossible to return mammoths to habitats similar to their former home, where they could reproduce naturally. So at the end of the day, they will still disappear again. Scientists may also be able to do this with other recently extinct species, such as the passenger pigeon. To do this, they would have to map the entire genome of the passenger pigeon, and then mutate the genome of a common pigeon to make it similar to that of a passenger pigeon. And voila, an extinct species has been cloned, but even if we were making millions of them, few weeks after people would be pissed to see so much pigeon around them, not knowing the real deal behind it. For sure, cloning is exciting, but I mean from real interesting species. Science has come a long way since Dolly the Chip was cloned in 1986. Today, there are conservation efforts to implant white winner embryos into a surrogate mother, but such efforts have sparked controversy. By some estimates, a woolly mammoth elephant hybrid is only a few years away. Experts say they are already halfway there. Can you imagine it? Experts estimate that if there were sufficient political funding for cloning, it would only take 10 years to reach a situation where zoos could be populated with raw and even endangered animals, where you could pay your admission fee and you and your family could see animals that have been extinct for thousands of years. Great, right? Doing all these efforts to create animals that did not ask nothing to put them behind bars. This is how fascinating the human logic can be. This is a curious question, and the answer is no. Clones do not always look the same, although clones share the same genetic material. The environment also plays an important role in the expression of the final organism. For example, the first cloned cat named CC, yeah, scientists can create clones but they are not able to create a correct name for a cat. CC is a tricolor cat that looks very different from the mother. The explanation for the difference is that the color and pattern of the cat's fur cannot be attributed solely to genes, a biological phenomenon involving the inactivation of the X chromosome in each cell of the cat, which has two X chromosomes, determines which code, color, genes are inactivated and which are activated. The distribution of X chromosome inactivation, which appears to be random, determines the appearance of the cat's coat. Amazing, isn't it?
On the one hand, the mortality rate of clone animals is very high. The reasons are not entirely clear, but reprogramming errors are likely among the causes. As scientists suggest that the donor egg nucleus essentially retains a kind of genetic memory and resists replacement with new genetic material. Reproductive cloning is a very inefficient technique, and most cloned animals' embryos fail to develop into healthy individuals. For example, Dolly was the only clone to be born alive, out of a total of 277 clone embryos. This very low efficiency, coupled with safety concerns, is a serious obstacle to the application of reproductive cloning. Researchers have observed some adverse health effects in sheep and other mammals that have been cloned. This include larger size at birth and a variety of defects in vital organs, such as the liver, brain, and heart. Other effects include premature aging and problems with the immune system. Another potential problem is the relative age of the chromosomes in the colon cells. As cells go through their normal division cycles, the ends of the chromosomes, called telomeres, shrink. Over time, the telomeres shrink to the point where the cell can no longer divide and the cell dies. This is part of the natural aging process that appears to occur in all cell types. Therefore, clones made from a cell taken from an adult may have chromosomes that are already shorter than normal, which could condemn the cloned cells to a shorter lifespan. In fact, Dolly was cloned from the cell of a 6 years old sheep and chromosomes that were shorter than those of other sheep her age. Dolly died when she was 6 years old, about halfway through the average sheep lifespan of 12 years. Thank you for watching me and see you Friday for another long video. Bye bye!